The Y Combinator is a crucial part of what makes the simplest programming language actually work. For those who haven't seen my latest video, Lambda Calculus is a mathematical model now programming language in which all you can do is create a function with a single argument and returning something else. No data types, control flow, or anything fancy. Whereas data and logic can be simulated with a simple feature, one necessity for Turing completeness, or the ability to calculate anything, is conditional looping, otherwise known as while loops. That is not a feature of lambda calculus, so instead we can simulate them by using recursion, which is the process of a function calling itself. In most languages, defining a function assigns it to a variable which can be referenced from within the function. In lambda, functions are simply values and cannot be assigned, just passed as arguments to other functions. This means that conventional recursion is made impossible. So how do we do it? Let's create the factorial function. For the sake of convenience, we'll write the logic in pseudocode. Since we don't have a reference to factorial, let's wrap this in a function taking fact as an argument. This is a function taking an argument to x and passing it to itself. If we call it using factorial, it exposes the insides and we can supply a number. The problem is that if we pass it anything other than 1, it'll break, as it has a reference to the whole factorial function and not just the math part. But what if we take the lambda x dot x x and pass it to itself? To evaluate, we replace every instance of x on the left with this whole right side expression. This returns exactly what we had originally. At this point, since there is an unresolved function call, an interpreter would continue to evaluate the expression over and over without ever stopping. This expression is known as the Omega Combinator. Let's make some adaptation. Wrap this in a function taking an argument f and surround both x of x terms with calls to f. We now have the famous y combinator, but what does it do? To see, let's pass it our factorial function. This simply returns factorial called with x of x, again exposing the inner function for a use with a number. Given 1, it works as expected, but what if we pass it a 2? At this point, since we use a reference to x of x, it gets evaluated and returns, you guessed it, factorial called with x of x. That's exactly the function we originally called with the number 2. It gets called, returns 1 as expected, and the whole expression resolves to 2 as a result of 2 factorial. To understand better, you'd be tempted to try writing this in Python or JavaScript's equivalent syntaxes. But when you do, you'll get a stack overflow error, because these languages aren't lazily evaluated. This means that evaluation happens whenever a value is created, instead of whenever it's referenced. In other words, it'll try resolving infinite x of x calls before even applying any f's. This can be remedied by converting the x of x terms with simple functions returning x of x. Then, when we use the rec argument, we just need to call it with no arguments and then use the return value of that. This is known as the z combinator. So the y combinator essentially allows you to go infinitely deep into a rabbit hole of references to the same function, and in doing so, makes lambda calculus Turing complete. If you learned something, subscribe and have a nice day.